in the final part of this tutorial, I wanted to show you a really quick way that you can do a figure ground by using some very basic tools in Rhino. So here we have our site and I've selected kind of a weird site. It doesn't have a sort of prototypical city grid. Um, it's an industrial zone, but we do touch on the grid in this part here. Um, and people who are familiar with Vancouver, or if you even just look at this um, more contextual site map, you will see that uh, we are ruled by grids in Vancouver. Almost every city block is an identical grid. In any case, we really like grids in Vancouver. So that's what our city is based on. And how would we create a figure ground? How would we begin to do that? There's a couple options. The first thing is, let's say you, um, you brought your context plan, or sorry, your, your site plan, which is the smaller version of the plan that's more zoomed in. Let's say you brought that into Illustrator. You could then go into Illustrator, um, go into your square, and you could use some basic tools like the circle tool or the rectangle tool or the pen tool to trace out shapes. So if I wanted to uh, trace out these circles, I could do that. Um, I could create circles there and there, but it's a little bit cumbersome to draw in Illustrator. And besides that, it's not super accurate. It's not really made for drafting. So a better way to do that is in Rhino. Rhino has the tools we need to accurately fill in these, these uh, spaces, these built and unbuilt spaces. So I'm gonna show you how I would do it. Making sure you're on the layer line work, um, I'm gonna use a few of these drafting tools. So if you hover over these tools, you'll see a bunch of different handy things. Up here is a polyline. This is a series of connected lines that you can create shapes out of that's handy for irregular shapes. We also have rectangles, very basic. All you need to do is um, trace a rectangle. So for example, I can use rectangle to trace the building here. Done. Trace the building here. Done. Trace the building here. All done. Yeah, so you can trace all the rectangles and this figure ground is not about accuracy in terms of um, precise preciseness. So like, I don't want you zooming into these buildings and then trying to guess, you know, like, is there a building here? Is there a building here? Is this an edge? Like, where does this, is this a truck or is it an edge? Who knows? Like, we, we definitely don't, need these shapes. Um, if you have all the time in the world and you really want to practice drawing in Rhino, you can of course do this as much as you want. But this is meant to be a really quick exercise. So I would just uh, do as little possible as you need to do to get the basic shapes um, out there. So, you know, in this case, maybe I'll add another rectangle here just to give it that extra bit but um, really you shouldn't be spending too much time. We can also use um, poly lines to trace out the blocks. So as Paul mentioned, we don't really consider people's front and backyards as part of the public realm. So even though it's not built form, you can consider a city block as basically private space. So considering the fact that there are sidewalks, you can think about using the edges of the sidewalks as delineating the blocks. And you'll notice that I'm really not being precious about how this, how this rectangle is formed. Um, I don't care that it is not orthogonal completely and that this is not perfectly straight. We're just here to outline form. So you can use polyline tool to quickly draft out your blocks. And then for irregular shapes, um, for example, for these circles, I guess that is a regular shape. I'm gonna use circle tool. That's pretty easy. I'm just gonna start in the middle and draw a circle here. Um, you can also just copy circles. So if you have a bunch of things that are the same size, just use um, the copy command. 
and you can drag it to all the places where there are the same shape. Okay, so that covers circles. If you have strange wavy buildings or other shapes that don't get covered by rectangles, poly lines, or circles, um, I would recommend that you use this other tool called control point curve. So go to this place where it says control point curve and instead of selecting it with your left mouse button, I want you to just click down on this little arrow and then select interpolate points. So this is going to allow you to draw a custom shape through points. So for example, let's say, let's say that this uh, is a building. How would you draw it? I'm just gonna put points where there's kind of curves around this area. And you'll see that Rhino is, is following the line that I'm creating and reshaping it so that it kind of fits this profile. So when you come to tight curves, you wanna maybe put a few tighter points in, um, not really being super precise. But there you go. And if you needed to move things around afterwards, you can always just drag on these points and move them into place. So that's how you might um, fill in some of the built areas in your site to create your figure ground. So let's say that I've gone through and traced all the buildings and the blocks and made sure that I uh, outlined all of the built spaces. Um, I haven't actually done that, but let's just pretend I did. What you could do then is select all of those objects. Um, actually, you can just lock that and then we can drag over top. Select all the objects and use the hatch command. It's going to give you a few options. Of course, we're just going to select solid. Say OK. And it doesn't show up. You might not see it. But if you turn off the image, you'll see that it's filled with a hatch. And the hatch is the same color as your layer. So basically, you have your figure ground. And all you need to do now is export selected. We know that Paul wants it at 5,000, 1 to 5,000, so that's how we're going to export it. Go into our options and say 5 meters is equal to 1 millimeter. And we export it. Now we can drag it into Illustrator. So let's just zoom out a little bit and see where it is. I would recommend you select everything, use Control or Command G to group it, and then use the Align tools to set it into the center of your artboard. Now we can move the edges of this artboard in and just create a square. It doesn't have to be perfect. Great. Um, now I'm just going to reorient this again just to put it in the center of this square. Now we don't want these to be green again, so um, the first thing we're going to do is Rhino exports all of the line work as a group, so select everything, right click and go ungroup. Then we're going to just select the hatch items. We're going to select everything and then you press shift and deselect this bounding box. Now we have all of the hatch items selected and we can go into our colors palette over here and just choose black. Now to make sure that um, the stroke is set to black also we can just double click on this and we can use color here. So that will, this, this brings up the most recently used color so we can just fill it like that. Um, and we can also set the color of this stroke here. So now we have a figure ground based on our site and you can save that out as a PDF or a JPEG.